Okay, this is just day three of this setup. So I ran this a few days ago to test the new copper plated bus bars. And that gave me a lower operating voltage thanks to the heat no longer being wasted on the bus bars acting like resistors. Now, moreover, I've also improved this setup. This thermometer probe has been plated with, uh, not plated, has been coated with a uh, engine enamel which allows it to be resistant to the cells so even though it looks like there's gonna be metal in there it's not you know if I pull this out right now it looks kinda looks like shit but that was previous damage and the coating doesn't seem to be causing any more damage to this thing and even if it does then I will just coat it again and plate it with Teflon moreover here's the scrubber system this is just a tube leading to a bunch of sodium hydroxide solution and uh, cloth and this is a demister actually you know when when I pull this out you can see that uh, there's like a cloud coming out you know see that white smoke and shit you know the problem with that is I would condense in here and I'll just be wasting so this demister actually collects the liquid which I can then open and put back into here but I'm not gonna open this right now for obvious reasons so I have two ports one is for the scrubber and demister the other one is for the temperature measurement and the temperature measurement of this uh, thing is wait is 64.3 degrees Celsius which is well within the operating temperature range of 60 to 70 degrees now the pH can be told just by looking at the water. It's, although I have a pH measurement stick, I sparingly use that and only see it once this water starts turning yellow, which means I have to add more buffer solution, which is calcium chloride. Now the uh, cathode of this thing, as you can see, that cathode is looking nice and crusty. That crusty is the calcium chloride present in very little amount, crusting on the... Uh, Electrode and the reason why that happens is because the reason why the pH drifts is because of chlorine escaping But because of the high temperature the chlorine mostly reacts before escaping So you only need very little pH control as temperature increases That means that higher temperature means less calcium chloride gets consumed Which means I don't have to spend all of it all of my calcium chloride exists in this buffer solution that I just add a few milliliters of every every day or so or if the water starts turning a bad color and this is the uh, voltage across these two points of the wire and I've made a calibration table before running the cell where I use this multimeter to measure the current and I use a resistive load adjusting the voltage of the supply and generating a table and using Ohm's law I was able to find with pretty good accuracy the uh, resistance between these two points over here so then given this value of 70 uh, millivolts this I can then plug in and divide that by 2.521 times 10 to the minus 3 ohms and if I do that I find that the current running through this cell is uh, 27.8 amps I'll just say 28 amps so at that, this cell will be done in four days, but I'm obviously not going to run this to full completion because that would damage the electrodes. You only want to run this to about 70% conversion. So the way you do that is, you know, I'm, I'm, since I'm not really going to be bothered on hardline, I didn't measure the weight of the salt because I kind of originally wanted to do this as a test. But I have a workaround. It's called, on day three, you add more salt to keep the levels within spec to prevent it from the chloride levels from getting too low. And the wires you have to use are these really thick wires that, uh, you know, can handle all the current. Otherwise, they're going to fucking smoke and melt. Like, I just did a test with this wire. I was doing something else. And yeah, as you can see, that wire is not looking so good. And these bus bars, yeah, they're copper plated and they're holding well. They're no longer burn you when you touch them because before this wire is black because before the uh, the uh, these bus bars would get so hot that they'd flash evaporate steam. 
Then I found out that when titanium has electric current passing through it, it can passivate at points because it will oxidize with the air or some bullshit like that. So a way I found out how to fix that is to just copper plate the titanium. Now I heard that you can't copper plate onto titanium, but they were just trying to sell me some shit product because you totally can. All you need is copper acetate, a bit of ammonia, ammonia and a bit of... Uh, what was it called again? And yeah, I put a bit of surfactants and I just put Listerine because that contains many kinds of surfactants and it worked. I got a really adherent plating. I just made sure that the voltage was 3.3. I controlled the current by by changing the length and the height of the immersed uh, anode in solution, which I used copper, of course. And yeah, that pretty much explains the overview of this cell, this volt. This power supply can deliver a maximum of uh, 50 amps, but I'm only running it at 27. This voltage adjuster adjusts the volts from uh, 4.5 to, uh, I think it's 4.5 to 5.5, yeah. And by adjusting the voltage slightly, I can adjust the current to whatever I want. And the current density of these uh, electrodes right now are at 89 milliamps per centimeter squared, assuming that both sides are pretty active. It's a little higher than that because obviously the, the cathode's in the center. But these are mesh electrodes, so the current can actually flow through them and touch the other side of it. So even if it was like double that number, it will still be within the uh, spec. So... All of that is fine. If I had used plate electrodes, then it will only be one side. But I didn't, so yeah.